if you ever needed to create a big uniform grid in After Effects of images, videos, logos, whatever, you know that doing that manually is a real pain. Luckily, you can tell After Effects to do it for you in a few minutes using some simple expressions. And the best part of it all? This grid will be dynamic and based on layer indexes, meaning you will be able to change the items per row and the grid will rearrange itself and you'll be able to reshuffle the items in the grid by moving the layers around in the layer stack. So first let's drop our dummy item comp in the main comp and we'll create a null object that will serve as an anchor to start counting our layer indexes from. First let's set the anchor point of the item at 0, 0 so it sits at the very top corner of the layer. Then let's zero out the position of the layer so it sits at the 0, 0 position of the comp and let's scale it down a bit. Now we need to write a dynamic expression that will automatically move each layer that has this expression to the correct spot in the grid based on its index. Let's enable expressions on position. Firstly, we need to let each layer know which position in the grid it should hold. Let's call that ID. To do that, we're going to use the index of the layer, which is the position of the layer that it holds in the layer stack. You can see the layer index shown next to the layer name. And we're going to minus the index of the anchor layer. This way, the IDs will always start counting from 1 no matter what their actual layer index is, as long as the item layers are straight under the anchor layer. And then we're going to add minus 1, because we want the ID of the first item to actually be 0, not 1, because we don't want it to move, we want it to stay at the 0, 0 position in the comp. Next, we need to define width of our item, um, and we'll call it W, and uh, let's just make a 4x4 four four grid for now, so let's just do 1 quarter of 1920, so 480, and for height let's call it H, and do 1 quarter of 1080, which is 270. And lastly, we need to define how many items per row we want, so we'll just call that variable items per row, and we'll do 4 for now. Then we need to define the variables for x and y position that we're going to be calculating, so let's just call them x and y. And for x, it's quite simple, so basically what we want to do is we want to move each next item in our layer stack one width's worth of pixels down the line horizontally. So we're going to do id times width. Let's just set y to 0 for now and let's test it out if this works. As you can see, as we duplicate items, each next one is getting positioned one width away from the previous one. Now the next step is to get the items after reaching the items per row amount, in this case starting from item 5, to drop down one height's worth of pixels in y position and start back on 0 on x position. Let's sort out the y position first. So here we need to take each item's ID and divide it by the items per row amount to figure out which row that item is located in. And then multiply that by height to shift each row down one height's worth of pixels. This however doesn't quite work because ID divided by items per row on its own is giving us fractional numbers. Therefore each item is getting pushed down by a fraction of height's amount. To fix that we can use the mat floor function which will clamp the values to the largest full number. So 0 divided by 4 will be 0, 1 divided by 4 will be 0, 3 divided by 4 will be still 0, and 4 divided by 4, which is our first item of the second row, will be 1, so we will shift one row down. Now we just need first item of every row to return to 0 x position. Fortunately, we can do that quite easily using the modulo operator. What modulo does is, it divides the numbers and returns the remainder of the division. So if we do id modulo items per row, we're getting the remainder of dividing each item's id number by the maximum number of items per row, essentially getting a counter that resets each time we reach a full row, which is exactly what we need. So now if we duplicate the items, you can see that our grid setup is working as we would expect it to. To take this build a step further and make it more versatile and usable in the future, we can create a bunch of sliders on the anchor layer and link them to the variables that we've set, instead of hardcoding them into the expression. Let's set the values back up and duplicate the item comp. Now you can see we can control the grid using the sliders. To take it another step further, let's zero out the anchor layer's position and parent all the items to it. Now we can use the anchor layer to scale or move around the whole grid. To create more items, we can just duplicate the item comp and it will automatically get arranged in the grid. And to actually put your content in the grid, you can just select the dummy item comps and drag your content comps onto them while holding ALT to replace them. And remember, because the grid is being arranged based on the layer index, if you want to rearrange it, you just have to move the layers around in the layer stack. So let me show you a real-world example how to turn a bunch of images into a grid in like 20 seconds. First we need to copy the expression that we wrote, so let's select the position, go to edit, copy expression only, grab your images, drop them in a comp, go edit paste to paste the expression, as you can see the expression has been pasted on the position parameter, scale the size down a bit, by default your anchor point will be in the middle of the layer, but let's put it at the top corner at 0, 0 position, parent all the items to the anchor layer, and then just mess around with the sliders that we've created to dial in the right settings. 